Exploring Andrews' economic potential will have that story coming up. Taken to transform the civil aviation sector, we've got the details straight ahead. Coming up in the Bahamas tonight, find out one parent's plan of action after his child was allegedly racially profiled at the Timberley School. We'll give you the details. Now in HD. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news brought to you by BTC Every Day. The government has made it no secret to significantly invest in the island of Andros. Good evening, everyone. I'm LaDawn Davis. And I'm Chris Saunders. Thank you so much for joining us. As the government seeks to, di to diversify the Bahami Bahamian economy by ensuring that each island is sustainable, Minister of Finance, the Prime Minister, the Right Honorable Perry Christie, expressed confidence in the role that Andros has to play as the country's breadbasket. While delivering the keynote address at today's Andros Business Outlook, Prime Minister Perry Christie highlighted the government's economic plan for that island. See Asker Adderley was there and filed this report. Prime Minister Right Honorable Perry Christie contends that for far too long, the Bahamas has failed to embrace agriculture and mariculture as significant economic drivers. Recognizing this fact, the Prime Minister pledged the government's commitment to making each island economically stable. Addressing the third annual business outlook in Andros Thursday morning, he pointed out that for Andros, an agricultural renaissance has already begun with the creation of the Bahamas Agricultural and Marine Science Institute. Bamsi in its or in itself is significant, but it is the multidimensional approach to development that we are confident that its success will lead to many other avenues of growth and development for Andros. In addition to agriculture, the nation's chief confirmed the government's strategy on improving infrastructure and exploring ecotourism opportunities. This, he says, is all in an effort to stabilize our economy and put the country in a position to be a major player in the area of trade. It also reaffirms the government's commitment to developing the entire Bahamas. Andros, in terms of bone fishing and fly fishing, I indicated could be the capital from places and compete with all of the great fishing, fly fishing places in the world. We know that we have to promote and regulate that, this with lodges welcoming people year round. We knew it was a possibility, and I say possibly for Bahamians to control this industry. Because of its geographical location, the Prime Minister is confident that Andrus could become an economic powerhouse in the future. Reporting from Love at First Sight Hotel and Restaurant in Stafford Creek, Andrus, C.S. Scatterly, ZNS Network News. A new radar on the way for Lyndon Penling International Airport, a groundbreaking ceremony taking place today for the installation of a new radar system and construction of ancillary buildings. The $15 million investment is expected to significantly transform the civil aviation sector while making the country the envy of the region. Fern Carey has the details. The groundbreaking ceremony at Lyndon Penling International Airport comes ahead of the installation of a new multi-million dollar radar system and the construction of ancillary buildings at the site. The major investment will significantly transform the civil aviation sector while improving services. The upgrade is also being done in accordance with International Civil Aviation Organization or ICAO standards. All of this entire works, the spectrum is $15 million. The radar cost was $11,812,293.80. And um, it's a significant investment by the Bahamian people. The radar was chosen after an international competitive bidding process. We are out to the world. We had ICAO consultants. That's different than what we did before. The project also includes the refurbishment of a non-functioning radar system and the installation of a radar 3D tower simulator. The simulator that we're going to house here will impact training, and this is a critical issue that I've indicated, because it will accelerate training of staff on the new radar. It will reduce by half the time required to train tower controllers. Spanish-based company Indra Systemas has been contracted to supply and install the new equipment. Indra's project manager is Ignacio Aguas. Next week, 
12 large containers will be shipped from Spain, bringing to the Bahamas all the equipment, radars, automation, and simulators required to complete the project. This is just the beginning of a long journey, and Indra, as technology partner, will work side by side with the Department of Civil Aviation to build their future. The project is expected to be completed in December of this year, and the process has already started to hire some 20 air traffic controllers to work at this facility. Starting June 1st, commercial business, and in some cases, other consumers, only here in New Providence though, will be required to submit their customs declaration on imports electronically. It's a process that started some two years ago. Customs controller Charles Turner and Financial Secretary John Rule confirmed the method will make the declaration process more efficient and pave the way for one electronic window nationwide for all consumers by the end of 2016. Activities will have a real and quantifiable impact on customs. During the remaining months of this year, I anticipate that we will engage in at least four major program, program projects related to one, the business process reengineering and regulatory processes, two, the establishment of a customs green and canine unit, three, development of a new training facility, and four, the restructuring of the organization to meet the demands of a modern customs administration. Implemented the, the electronic uh, window along with the significantly greater use of risk management assessment and post audit controls will considerably reduce the time and effort and the level of direct upfront transactions based intervention required to move goods into and out of the Bahamas. Indeed, the future of revenue collection across all agencies will be guided by more audit-based interventions rather than existing trans transactions-oriented approaches. State Minister of Finance Honorable Michael Alkita said the new electronic initiative is all a part of a revamping of the Customs Department and modernizing its policies. Ace International Consultants were awarded the government's consultancy project in this process. Alkita noted that as the government considers various tax options, one of the complaints was that the government should go after what is publicly owned. With this significant change, Halkidis maintains they are looking to do just that. Implementation of the electronic single window will significantly simplify regulatory processes and considerably improve their transparency and predictability. This should lead to a substantial reduction in clearance times and the costs associated with the regulatory clearance processes. From a societal protection point of view, the electronic single window will provide capabilities for agencies such as the Ministry of Health and Ministry of Environment to react efficiently to halt the release of goods from customs control, which may be identified as contaminated or banned on health or environmental grounds. While the primary focus of the electronic single window will be to integrate and automate regulatory processes, it will also address overall supply chain issues through the electronic exchange of pertinent information with shippers, customs brokers, the public and port facility operators. The government's new shock treatment initiative received high praises today from participants who say the experience has made them realize that prison is not for them. The first group of young men to complete three days of the program experienced life at Her Majesty's prisons and took in the criminal experience to deter them from a life of crime. Minister of National Security, the Honorable Dr. Bernard Nordic, says the government is doing something to address crime and he recognizes the potential of the initiative, but the program is being criticized before being given a chance. As we have embarked on an attempt to make a difference with our young men and boys, do you know that earlier this week they accused us of wanting to take black Bahamians back to the Middle Passage? You know what that means? They'll be treating them like slaves. We even didn't start the program yet. They don't even listen to what you say that you're doing. But they get on their horses and they start to criticize. Yesterday, we told you the story of a mother who alleged that her children were racially discriminated against at a school in Sandyport. 
Tonight, Janae Noel Ferguson tells us that another parent is coming forward with similar allegations and has taken his child from the school about two years ago. He is calling on Bahamians to take action and has also put together a social media protest on this racial issue. My son was there for two years, K-5 and uh, grade one. Uh, and we went through the same, the same nonsense, the same foolishness. More claims of racism coming from the Tambali school. This time a former parent says that when his child attended the school, there were a number of run-ins with the principal. There's a, distinct, there's a distinct air of if you don't fit in, if you don't constantly suck up to the owner of that school, you're not getting anywhere. I'm very sensitive to any hint of racism and I pick it up very easily because obviously it's something that is so against what I stand for that I will never accept it. And when I saw Miss Kezar I feel I feel bad because her child got a little bit more of, of the stick than mine because I took him out before he got to that point. Expat J.P. Michelson is married to a black Bahamian female who is the mother of his children. He's the second parent to reveal alleged allegations of racism at the Sandy Port Bay School. When we visited the school's campus today, some of the parents we spoke with anonymously denied experiencing racism at school. This parent says he's calling on all Bahamians to hit the school where it hurts, and that's in their pocket. As far as I'm concerned, the only thing I can do is create the awareness and people will join in. And after what I saw last night online, people are joining in and very vocally. Now, are they going to come out in public and let's say March? I don't, I don't think that's necessary. The only thing I want done or I wanted done with what I did is I want to make sure that people are aware. And at the end of the day, it's like every other business. If they don't get any students, they don't make any money and this foolishness will soon stop. We visited the school on two occasions Thursday. The first time we were told by teachers the principal was not available. And on the second time we were advised to make an appointment. They came this morning and they told us to come after 11. I have no idea what time it is. Okay, okay, okay. I teach the little ones. Oh, okay. Um, so she wants us to make an appointment with, with I think her there. probably be best. Okay. We also made several calls to the school that were never returned. Janae Noel Ferguson, ZNS Network News. Great story, Janae. The cries of crime. A prominent pastor speaks out on the issue. And the parking procedures, new changes on the horizon. The Bahamas Tonight continues right after this. This segment of the news is brought to you by Shell Quality Fuels.